Good morning to Wellness Wednesday. Today, our surrounding topic is nutrition and behavioral health and how these two things cross over. So today we've got a guest we are so excited about. Um, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, I'm Clarice Lee Perkins and I am the registered dietitian here at the Mobile County Health Department. So Clarice and I actually work across the hall from one another. We are in the Aura Wellness Suite, which actually began as Aura Laser Skin Care. And so now we share it with our dear colleague, Deirdre Phillips. So um, it's a great form of wellness. We got behavioral health, we got spa, laser skin care, <laughs> and nutrition. So um, today we really just wanted to talk and, and hear from Clarice some of the main things that she encounters and maybe get some tips. So shall we begin? Sounds great. Okay. So my first question is, can you explain your role uh, for patients overall health? Yeah. So um, the way that nutrition works, which I think right. is similar for you too, is that we get the referral from their provider. Right. And the referral will have their diagnosis on it. And that can be anything from overweight, underweight, any sort of health complication like diabetes or high blood pressure. And so that's kind of where I where I start, right? So that's my main goal is to try and help them with those problems. Mm -hmm. Make an appointment, they come in. And first I like to talk to them about how they're eating right now. You know, kind of what's, what's our routine like? What are we eating? Mm -hmm. And then we talk about, or I educate them on what the ideal is. So this is, Kind of their goal eating this is how we can best manage any sort of health problem that they have mm -hmm. and then we work together to kind of talk about okay what are the steps that we take to get there mm -hmm. right like what are the goals that we make what are the changes that we have to make and make it not as easy as possible but as realistic and doable as possible right awesome so Clarice and can you kind of share in the camera some of the top ways that you feel uh, people can learn as far as how to gain a better nutrition, some easy tips as far as building their nutrition. Yeah, well, I think everyone's a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's starting at a different point. But I, I really think that if people are more prepared, that they're more likely to make a better decision. So I do this with a lot of patients. I'll go through and I'll say, okay, you know, how often do we want a grocery shop? Can we plan for a week? Can we plan for two days? Can we plan for three days? Um, and if we can kind of talk through those meals, make a grocery list, they're a lot more comfortable when they leave. Yeah. And then they're a lot more confident going into those days. Because mm -hmm. like we were talking about earlier, and mm -hmm. like I say to patients all the time, you will always make a better decision for yourself ahead of time yeah. than you will in the moment. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to plan for those moments where you will usually make the less healthy decision, mm -hmm. it kind of takes that decision out. Right. Yes, I know and I can imagine some of the worst food choices I've made is when I'm hungry <laughs> and I'm not prepared. So um, another thing that I've even heard is what about when people say, Eating healthy is just too expensive. What do you say to that? Because I can imagine a lot of people have a desire to be healthy, but then when it really comes down to it, they may be a little resistant. So, so what do you say, and, and even speak to that resistance part, if you, if you want, to people that are like, it's too expensive to be healthy? Yeah. Well, it can be. I mean, there are some foods that are expensive, but right. the... It goes back to what we just talked about. If you have a plan for yourself, don't plan to buy the most expensive meat. Mm -hmm. Don't plan to buy things that aren't in season. Those mm -hmm. are gonna be expensive. Mm -hmm. But if you, even if you just walk around the grocery store and look and see, okay, what's on sale this week? You know, yeah. which foods are most affordable? Because a lot of us get into kind of a routine, right? We buy the same stuff from the same grocery store, the same aisles. And we don't ever really look at the other foods. Yeah. But there could be fruits that are on sale that you don't even think about because you don't ever look at them. Mm -hmm. So if you're able 
Yeah. To either play in foods that you know are cheaper or go in thinking, okay, I know I want to have a vegetable with each meal. Which one's most affordable? Mm -hmm. It's going to be cheaper. Yeah, I hear you. And there's even the point that spending food and fast food and things like that, that can really be expensive. Yeah, you might just be spending $7, but if you really look at all your receipts, you could spend less at a grocery store one time than all the fast food that you're eating over the week. Yeah, well, and I don't know about you, but if I'm, if I've planned a meal, I don't want to cook for a long time. So I'm not going to plan things that take me an hour and a half, right? Mm -hmm. It takes time to get up, put your clothes on, go out of your house, get in the car, go to the drive through drive through it, and then eat it. And you could have cooked something or at least had something hot that was better for you and didn't cost as much. Right. So, Clarice, I can imagine that, like I said, I think you probably get a general consensus of everybody wants to be healthier. Everybody maybe wants to, uh, you know, be a couple of pounds thinner. <laughs> Not everybody, please, not everybody, but a lot of people maybe know that they could they could benefit from that. Um, so how do you kind of facilitate them getting from where they are and then where they want to be? I think a lot of that is even just identifying where they want to be. Right, and it's right? so different it's for so each different. person. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, what's their lifestyle now? What's their... What's their work schedule? Are they working? Are they flexible? And then kind of just surveying on which areas they're most passionate about. Mm -hmm. Are they mo more likely to start being active or are they more likely to start cooking? You know, kind of seeing yeah, what's most realistic that. for them. What are they excited to do and starting there. And then once they kind of build that confidence, then we're able to go forward and say, okay, now let's work on these other things that we maybe weren't so excited about, but now we kind of see the value in those changes. Gosh, I love that so much. <laughs> I really do. Um, you know, because what you're doing is you're not only giving insight for them, but you're really recognizing what do they love? What, right. what works for them? And as far as, you know, intrinsic internal motivation, um, you've got to have that want for yourself. We can't want it for you. you got to want it for yourself. So you're kind of like sparking and igniting some of their own motivation. So that is so huge. And I will say um, I shadowed Claris one of her sessions, and I noticed that about you, you know, that you really – took an interest in the patient mm -hmm. and you connected with them. That connection and that encounter was critical in them hearing what you have to say right. and trusting you. Yeah. And we did t discuss earlier what might be an ideal client, right? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> and that was one of yours. You know, someone that lets you serve your role mm -hmm. as a registered dietitian and there's a little bit of a trust element like, you know what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think it's also confusing because we see this on the internet, in print, mm -hmm. on pictures, all these different tips. And here's how you lose weight in two hours. And here's how yeah. you completely change your life in five minutes. And they <laughs> yeah. read these things and they you you buy in because it's, it's published, right? It, whether mm -hmm. it's on Facebook or on a website, someone has published it and so you believe it. And so then when I see people who have read these things, they're convinced about it, and then I say something that's maybe different, there's kind of that alarm because yeah. it's different from what they've already what they already believe. Right. Right. So they do have to trust me and I just say, just give it a try. You know, these are things that I've studied and I've learned and I've been taught and they work and it's you know, it might yeah. be different from what you read. I love that. Yeah, I'm actually thinking of someone in particular, you know, there's so many diets and books and this and that. And especially if someone has a chronic illness, such as, mm -hmm. you know, diabetes or hypertension, you really would benefit from talking to a professional versus just getting the hot book, you know, that you hear about and following those kind of guidelines. Yeah. And you've really talked about intuitive eating, too. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe touch on that? 
Intuitive eating? Love intuitive eating. Yes. <laughs> it's one of her passions. Yeah. Well, and that's most appropriate when we are trying to lose weight or we're trying to kind of fix our relationship with food, which I you're probably pretty familiar with, too, because yeah. food's really emotional and people can use it as either a way to deal with grief or happiness or sadness or however. Mm -hmm. But when we kind of take a step back, food is to nourish, right? It's for energy yeah, and for energy. vitamins and nutrients, and it's mm -hmm. not for soothing. And so when you practice intuitive eating, what you're being aware of is, okay, am I hungry? Am I full? And following those cues versus am I sad? Am I happy? Has this made me feel better? Right. So if you're hungry, you should eat something. But mm -hmm. if you're full and you're sad, you should do something else. Right. Which kind of ties into you. So you True. are able to provide them with those other ways of coping. And I am yeah. there to kind of help them recognize that, okay, this isn't the purpose of food. Yes. I love that. And you know what? I think that really leads into the little exercise that we had going. Okay. Do you want to read the case study? Um, and then basically what we came up with is it might be helpful to have a case study of a patient for Clarice to share how she would serve the patient from a nutrition perspective and then how I would serve the patient from a counseling behavioral health perspective. So let's do it. You want right. to? Yeah. Okay. okay. So our first one, we have a 12-year-old female, right? Mm -hmm. She was referred right. to nutrition for obesity. Um, I looked at her growth chart, and I saw that she'd gained about 30 pounds over the last 12 months, which is pretty quick, too quick for a 12-year-old. Yeah. And this put her above the 99th percentile for her weight for age. So 99, that's the high end. So that means compared to other girls her age, she's weighing in the highest. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I brought her in. We made an appointment. I talked to her and her family. Um, first visit, I learned that she doesn't like to eat at school. She doesn't, not really involved in after school activities. So we're not playing sports, not in a club. Spends a lot of time outside of school on tablets, mm -hmm. in bed, mm -hmm. on the couch, looking at screens. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked a little bit more. She said that she does not like the food at school. So we don't like the food at school. Um, but when she gets home, she eats all afternoon on snack foods, and she complained of being really tired, not being able to focus at school, and then parent adds, oh, yeah, and you're pretty irritable. Right. So, okay. you know, I took this, and from a nutrition standpoint, um, I saw her for weight, right? And so I, my main goal with young girls isn't necessarily weight loss, but more of just slowing or stopping the weight gain right okay. so I kind of I educated her and her mom on different food groups portion sizes best choices mm -hmm. um, you know should we bring foods to school if we don't like the foods at school kind of mm -hmm. talking through things like that um, I also like to talk to parents separately so I talked to mom by herself and I said you know your mom needs the education because 12 year old isn't grocery shopping mm -hmm. right so don't buy foods you don't want her to eat Mm -hmm. You know, if you if she wants to snack, let's have things that are high quality. So, you know, fruits, veggies, whole grains, things like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of made some goals, and that was how I initially helped them. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, and then hearing that, you've collaborated with both the mom and the, and the child, mm -hmm. and you've helped them kind of form a plan. Okay. My turn. From behavioral health. Behavioral health standpoint. Um so, again, I would also talk with both the mother and the daughter first and hear their presenting concern. Uh, from there, you know, the mom may say some in front of the daughter, but then I would also ask the mom, you know, would it be okay or, or would you like to speak with me individually? The mom usually says yes. So then I would speak with the mom. The mom would probably give me a little bit more background um, and, and maybe share like, yeah, she stays on her tablet all the time. And I'm a little concerned about her because she's just not herself. She's irritable. Um, you know, she's, she's not social. She stays in her room a lot. I'm kind of, it sounds like, mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely gather information. I may even provide mom with a little bit of psychoeducation on, you know, having too much face screen time on a tablet or on social media 
can promote feelings of depression and anxiety. So I may kind of encourage her to think about setting some realistic and, and reasonable boundaries for that. Um, and even talk about, well, what about quality time? And what does that look like between you two? That's great. Because relationships are so important. And then I would speak with the patient and really look to connect with the 12 year old mm -hmm. and hear kind of like what you were talking about earlier about what their passions are. I would hear what she loves. I would look to um, primarily build rapport with the patient and hear about, you know, how she desires to build her overall wellness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even at 12, may have a desire. She might even say something like, you know, I do want to lose about 20 pounds or so yeah. uh, or lose some weight. And so we would talk about how to get there. I may give psychoeducation on making SMART goals. And so I'd probably through that, through learning more and more about her, through listening and primarily, and then I would wrap it up with a summary of what we talked about and then a reasonable goal. So I would say, what could be reasonable? What did you speak with Miss Claris about? Um, and she may say something like, well, I could bring an apple for lunch every day. Mm -hmm. in, in addition, you know, at least eat an apple at lunch. Or she may say, well, I can take a walk with my mom two days this week. And we go from there. That's great. Yeah. So it's definitely a lot of hand in incorporating hand. the overall wellness and the behavior, but also really leaning into that positive psychology too, mm -hmm. not just focus on the fatigue or the irritability, but focus on building fulfillment and things like that. Yeah. So we got to wrap it up, <laughs> but this has been really enjoyable, Clarice. It's Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that it provided some insight or some feedback and please uh, enter your questions if you have them. Uh, in conclusion, remember that you can call central appointments in scheduling a session uh, with first, if you're not a patient, you've got to get with a primary care provider first, who then will refer to behavioral health or to nutrition. So um, again, thank you. And the number to call is 251-690-8800. <laughs> um, thank you, and have a great Wellness Wednesday. Aww. <laughs> so sweet. Yes. You're the best. Yeah. <laughs>